Hello guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's on the bench, back with the Spitfire, and that is now part 15. It's now been a couple of weeks since I sent the um, the clear parts off for the uh, maskings to be made at um, Art Scale Kit. So there has been, I think it was the day I sent them, there had been some sort of breach of security at Royal Mail. So um, they were asking people not to send anything abroad, so I think that's held it all up. But I believe they're there now. I'll have to have a look on the tracking later on. Uh, right here, right now, is the 23rd of January, 2023. Uh, today, the first part of the Hurricane is going up. And that kit, as we sit today, is pretty much finished. So um, that's why I've decided to put the video series out. And uh, I've just I've done part five. And part six is just going to be weathering and everything. So uh, we'll go from there. Um, so I thought I'd better have a look at this Spitfire and see what I can do before, you know, before I get the clear parts and something I have thought about is these stripes now these stripes these D-Day invasion stripes uh, there's there's three different options in the in the color call out here for this aircraft you've got the full stripes all around the fuselage you've got the half stripes just over the bone of the bottom and then you have no stripes okay so this is basically June 44 um, this is Sometime after June, I've been looking online and there was a request by the, uh, the Home Services or RAF or whatever it was. There was a request by them to remove the upper um, stripes. OK, so that's what they did. And then towards the end of the year in December, there was a, a, a request to remove all of the stripes. People have talked to me about having these stripes. They were overpainted again. So basically they they, they painted the, the black and white and then overpainted again it appears from what i'm looking at online it appears that they were actually removed so whether they were like a water best paint that could be scrubbed off or something i don't know um but i've also read some stuff about them being completely removed and then reappearing after they were completely removed and it would seem that the second time they came back they were much neater they were given hardly any time at all to put the stripes on. People have said about them being put on with a broom. I've found no images of them being put on with a broom, but, a broom, but I've certainly seen them being put on with a paintbrush. And there are many pictures online, if you look on Google, there are many images, and they show that they were actually quite good. Um, I don't think they were masked, but I think they were actually painted quite straight. So, um, And as I've said before, I think I mentioned it in the Hurricane video, I may have mentioned it in here, to actually make these look like they're roughly painted in 24 scale or in any scale is going to be extremely difficult to because you have that very thin line between you've made a mess of those stripes mate and sort of you know oh they look accurate for the time so i think what we all do with our models we use artistic license and we make them like quite accurate like these are here so i think that's what we'll be doing now i'm going to go for this option with the stripes only on the underside, which in my opinion, if they removed it from here, if they if they changed from this to this, then surely they would have removed the stripes from the top of the wings as well. Now, when they removed them, I don't know if there would have been some staining left behind or if there would have been some scratching or whatever. I'm guessing there would have been some touch ups, whatever. But uh, I, I need to look further into it. But for the moment, I'm just going to have my stripes underneath the belly and underneath the wings. Now you can see some black paint here. This is just basically seam checking. Um, so we can see on here now that we've got the undersides of the wings done. This is LP65. I want to refer to also Mr. Surfacer. There's some seams to be taken care of on these cannons and they're a bit nasty to deal with. So get, get in and get those done first. Um, and then I've also done here the black underneath the back there. And then we're going to add the white stripes. And now I'm going to mask that off. And the reason I've done it this way round is, number one, any pre-shading or anything we do, like on panel lines and stuff, wouldn't appear on the white stripes because, on the invasion stripes, because they were quite fresh. You know, sort of between June and, and you know, in June they were applied. By December they were completely removed. So, you know, you think the maximum life of these would have been three, four months. So... They wouldn't be that weathered really they might be a bit chipped and stuff but you wouldn't have the the shading on the edges of dirty panels and stuff so that's one thing we've got to be careful of um and the other reason i've done this is because basically it's easier to mask these stripes and paint the model than it is to mask the whole model and paint the stripes and risk not getting white overspray everywhere so that's what i'm going to do 
So I'm going to paint the stripes first, mass them up. Then I'm going to paint the stripe over here in the sky color, mass that up. And then we'll go and do all our pre-shading and everything. And then we'll start to get into the colors. So we're starting to get sort of pretty much near the end. But I don't really want to go beyond pre-shading until I've got my clear parts. Because obviously we don't want to go paint everything and then put the clear parts on and deal with the seams. And then have to paint all that again. We may as well do it all at the same time. So I'll probably go on and paint the underside and then mask that off and then we'll wait for the clear parts to return before we do any more work in that area um, and what I'll basically do is as I say once the stripes are done I will mask them and then I will pre-shade up to the masking because that is exactly what you would have and it will make the, the stripes look like they've been added on afterwards so you've got a dirty aircraft with grubby panel edges and everything like that and then the stripes were put on afterwards so that's what we're going to do there um, I also need to paint the doors, I believe. No, it looks like we're okay, actually. It looks like it doesn't actually reach as far as that door. So that's okay. So we don't need to paint the doors. I'm not doing the top, so we don't need to paint the doors there. So yeah, basically we're good to go. So I've masked these off rather than put the doors in there because I want to paint the doors and make sure we get the edges and also make sure we get into the edges down in here. So that's why they're masked rather than using the doors. You'll also see that I've glued the flaps in the raised position. Um, I was sent a message to say that basically Spitfire flaps, or I guess any fighter flaps, were always raised on the ground. Um, apparently it was a joke among the lads that if any pilot left the flaps down, it was there around at the pub or something. I don't know why, if it was just a joke or, or what they were, why they did it. But um, basically it was classed as, you know, total stupidity to leave your flaps down on the ground. So I looked through my wing leader books, the wing leader photo archive books, and I could not find a single picture of a Spitfire with its flaps down other than one which had probably crashed on landing. So had a f the rem remains of a flap hanging out here. But um, every other picture of the flaps were up. I couldn't find a single picture with the flaps down. So I've glued them up now closed, which <laughs> all the work I did in there has been wasted. And also I've glued those doors down closed because they're the indicators that show the flaps are actually down. So those doors are glued back in there. They're not a wonderful fit, but um, they will do. And once they're camouflaged, I think they'll look absolutely fine. Obviously, engine covers are taped on to protect the engine from overspray. And obviously, cockpit is the same. And as you can see here, as I say, I've gone round seam checking and everything looks grand. I also put some Mr. Surfacer in those screw holes, if you remember, to lessen the deepness of those and that's all done so really happy with how she's coming out looking really really nice and um, those seams in there are lovely as well you can see I've done those so uh, yeah what a beautiful kit this is the other thing I'm noticing um, as I paint it as the paint is when the paint is wet and shiny I'm starting to see this thing is actually covered in sink marks you would think you look at it and think perhaps it's panel detail but you know there's sink marks all down here um you've got you can see you can probably see there you can there you can see it now they've got a great big circle there where that landing light well that light is for the um for the pr version um so yeah basically it is absolutely covered in sink marks but it doesn't matter because it's going to be matte so you're not going to see them but uh you can see along there you can kind of see there there's like a, a line it looks like it's sort of recessed i, I don't know but there's definitely, you can see over here, there's definitely circles in that wing which are moulded in like sinks and they're horrible. But uh, I'm not going to do anything about repairing them. I'll just leave them and uh, I think they'll disappear under the weathering and everything. So there we are, guys. That's just to say where we are. So I'm going to get on with um, spraying these stripes. And then once they're done, I think I'll come back and uh, say hello again. And so our stripes are done. As you can see there, we've got them on the underside. Not too happy with how that's come out. This is very, very difficult to mask here because it's it's tapered it that way and that way. So it's kind of very, very difficult. And I've had to use narrow bands of tape and try and get them spaced out and everything. But, you know, um, it looks great from the sides and everything. But it's just when you look directly at the bottom of it, it just doesn't look quite even. But I'm not going to worry about it too much. Who's ever going to look at the model like that? No one's ever going to see it other than me anyway. So <laughs> let's face it, if the truth be known. So um, basically, there we are. 
So that's the stripes done. So now these are actually uh, ten and a half mil. I think they're ten and a half mil, and these are eight and a half millimeters, as per the. Where are the painting instructions? Here they are. So much on the go here. I've got my boat that I'm doing with Paul uh, and Chris. So um, yeah, we've got the eight millimeter stripes here and the ten and a half millimeter stripes here. Okay. So if you remember, I used my lovely Infini cutting mat to get the to get the width of the straight stripes. So I've just put tape below there and then cut them to the same width. Job done. So I need to cut some 10.5 mil widths there. Put in there now on each side to, to sort of mask that off. And then we'll do that down that side as well. And then we can carry on and paint the rest of the model with these completely masked off. So on the same back here with the 8 mil. Obviously what I've got to do here is mask across here and we'll put in the the band and then we'll mask the band well first of all I've got a mask either side here to get the white and mask across there and then we'll put the band in then we'll mask the band and then we can spray the primer and everything and all the weathering and pre-shading and all that as we go but I'm um, not quite sure what I'm going to do about these engine covers yet obviously I can't prime and pre-shade with tape on there perhaps I could tape that up there and then tape it on afterwards and take them up but what I don't want to do is spray all this with the engine covers off because the overspray will get all over the engine and I don't want to ask the engine because it's going to be a nightmare so um I think what we'll do is do do everything we can uh and then deal with these afterwards so um that's going to be fine so on the whole very very happy with that so that is that is LP65 rubber black on there and this is LP uh, four matte white over MRP white primer. I put the MRP white primer down first because it's a good old base. That's the grey one. This is the MRP. This is available again from Premium Hobbies. Absolutely wonderful stuff. Goes down beautiful. If you want a nice smooth satin finish without any graininess in it, this is probably your best bet. Although it is a little off white, you see. So I went over it with some with some white afterwards just to get that crystal clear white in it and then we give it a wash and everything it'll pull it, it'll pull it back so I'm going to get this masked up now and then we'll start doing some um, some priming and some pre-shading here we are next day now and uh, got the striping uh, masked off so here we've got a couple of bands of 10 and a half mil wide tape placed carefully along the edge of the black and then on the back here we've got the eight millimeter place carefully along the edge of the black and then just masked off the area. So now you see they can stay masked up while we do all the rest of the painting and um, and that'll be that. Um, because I'm going to have to hold off doing the upper painting until we've got the canopy and everything sorted, that I'll probably remove the masking tape um, and then just roughly mask it once the underside is done. Because obviously if you're leaving masking tape on too long, it can start to cause issues. And when you peel it away, especially this household stuff, although it's very good quality household stuff, you will end up with bits left on there. So best to not leave it on there too long. So uh, it's time to give it a prime now. So I'm going to use uh, Mr. Service for 1200, which is thinned with an inch of its life. Um, and I'm going to use my Bart Sharp. Airbrush. This is the Bart Sharp. Uh, I can't remember what it's called now, but it's it's 50 quid. It may have gone up slightly now, but it comes with a 0.2, a 0.3 and a 0.5 needle and nozzle. It comes with three different size cups. It has um, adjustment there on the air. It's bloody awesome for the money. Um, no, it's not as good as Iwata. Uh, my little Iwata here, I have actually, if you've seen my Hurricane video, I've actually damaged it and I've, I've had to get a new nozzle for it. A new nozzle for that. That's just the little, the nozzle is just, let me put this bar sharp down a minute. The nozzle is just that part on the end there that the needle's coming through. It's literally just that part there. And that is 30, 30 something pounds. When you bear in mind, you can get this complete airbrush with hose, uh, quick connects. So it's got the quick connects on the bottom. You get two of those. Um, it comes with the hose, got the quick connects, the airbrush itself, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5 nozzle and needle and the three different size cups. All, they all screw in. Um, you've got the stop on the end here, which is brilliant because you can basically push that in, screw that in and it'll only allow you to come back so far. So if you want to do something like mottled camouflage, say, on the side of a, a 109, you can go and always get the same size 
rather than trying to guess it. It's absolutely brilliant. So really good little tool for the money. It, no, it's not as good as an Iwata, but it's great for primers. Um, and like if you're doing military stuff, aircraft, tanks and all that, it's absolutely fine. If you're going to start getting into cars and you want to start spraying you know, lacquers and getting a really beautiful finish, perhaps move on to something better. But for this sort of thing, this is absolutely fine. So I'm just going to basically give the whole underside and up the sides a bit, a, gray, a coat of grey primer, and then we're going to put a, um, a pre-shading on. I'll do a little bit now on camera because I know you like to see me spraying. And um, I'll do a little bit on camera and then I will um, do the rest in the booth because of the stink. So we're just going to basically lay some paint down on here. You can see it going down. It doesn't need to be thick, it just needs to be a thin coat. We're not after flooding it. We don't want to eradicate any detail. But we're doing this just basically, it's going to show us any issues we've got with any um, fillers or seam lines or anything like that. going to make sure I get the leading edge. So basically, yeah, just going along. Always keeping the airbrush in the in the in the sort of direction of flight, and that way, if we do get any marks or anything in the, the lines in the paint, they'll be in the direction of flight. So they'll just become part of the weathering. And as I say, we're not after a mega thick coat of paint. We just want we just want a coat of paint down there, and particularly, we don't want a thick coat here because we don't want to step where we have the masking tape. Another tip to, to remember is if you are trying to avoid that build up, if you always spray away from the masking tape like that, okay, you won't get a build up because you've got a soft edge. So we'll do that there, which is what I should have done here. But, uh, but it's never too late. Come along now and go like that. As you can see, it's a really thin layer, but you know, not all I'm doing is, is trying to see if we've got any issues. That's all it's for, and it also gives a nice little base for the um, for the other paint to stick onto. So we'll just come along here, staying away from the masking tape. We've got foam shoved down inside our radiator housings. Have a look at those seams around the radiator houses, make sure they're okay. Do the same here. Just get some paint on them. And there we go. So I'm going to get into the booth now because it's starting to stink. As I say, with the engine covers, I'm going to just have a look at that seam there. I can see that needs a bit more work. As soon as you get the wet paint on there, you get a gloss and you can see then if you have an issue. And that's the thing, this is why I'm using primer. But uh, I basically got these on literally to cover the engine, stop the paint going in there. Then we get the leading edge. There we go, I'm going to get the rest done because it's starting to stink. And there we go, she's all in primer, other than the engine covers, I haven't done them, but um, gone round the top as well, so we've done all this, looking at all these seams, everything is absolutely wonderful, everything is really, really nice. The only place I had to put, you can see there, I've put a little drop of Mr. Surfacer in there, there was a funny line, there's supposed to be a seam line across there, but it's right on the rivet, so I'm not going to chance it. So um, what I'm going to do is just fill that little gap there and then leave it as a little row of rivets. Um, the riveting around here had to be gone over again. It's not the best, but it's it's underneath. It's okay. So there we are. Um, make sure if you are doing this, make sure to keep pressing down the edges of your masking tape because they do want to peel up. It's not so important because these stripes were painted on after any other colours you put on. So basically, if you do, sorry about this. If you do, if you do actually. Um, if you do actually get some paint under the masking tape, it doesn't really matter because it wouldn't have been perfect. I mean, this is all too perfect anyway, as we know, but uh, there we go. So the next thing I'm going to do now is do the sky 
or I'll probably do some pre-shading and then do the sky band around here and then mask that off as well so uh, there we go in fact I may do the sky band there and not mask it off until I'm ready to spray the top so we shall see but anyway there we go um, I'll let, I'll wait for that to dry it and then rub it down and then we'll get on with some pre-shading but in the meantime I have to go to the dentist Ooh, my biggest fear in life is the dentist <laughs> Okay, moving on. So we've got the uh, the dirty mat sorted. Uh, we've got the dirty mat out, sorry, because we're doing painting, obviously, so sorry about that. Um, I'm afraid we've been a bit halted. I've done some chrome work. I've done the chrome on the actual undercarriage legs there, as you can see, which means spraying it gloss black and then going over with alclad chrome. Uh, and I did the same in here for the uh, ID light underneath. Um, we've done the, the band around the... Um, around the tail there but I, when I was spraying I've, I've done the, the spinner as well while I was spraying I had um, some bits come out of the airbrush which was very rude so the airbrush is now in soaking you can see there's some bits in it there but uh, I'll just blow over it again probably just to see but, so it's just a shame they've got some bits come out there I believe there's a decor stencil decor goes there so we may get away with that but um, I have, I've forgotten to appreciate it anyway so I'll probably have to do it again but uh, there we go. So now we're a bit halted, I'm afraid, because I want to put this formation in, like, in. But once again, it, it seems like one of the let down, letdowns with this kit is the clear parts. I hope the canopy and everything fits better. But if you remember, I had a, night, a nightmare fitting these, these, um, these uh, navigation lights. But um, yeah, this light in here goes in there and it's literally like a prick in the top. Ah, it's, it's, I don't know if you can see that. The gap around there is absolutely massive. So I think what I'll do is probably mix up some ultra, some ammo ultra glue with water and just run it in there and, and hopefully it will fill the gap in. But uh, it's not um, it's not very nice. So I'm going to have to do that and then let that dry probably for a couple of days before I can carry on. Because that's going to be part of the pre-shading because we'll, we'll mask that. We might paint it according to the instructions. I'm looking at the, the colour call outs and it's saying it's amber. So... Whether they're saying that on all of them or not, I don't know. They've got an amber on that one. They've got amber on the Belgian one. And I don't have the other one here with me, but uh, I'm not sure if it should be amber or not. But, um, maybe, you, well, by the time you let me know in the comments, it'll be too late. So um, I'm going to get some ammo ultra glue here, mix it up with some water, nice and thin, and then run it in and let it capillary around. So in fact, what I might do is take it out Take it out like so with a bit of blue tack. Put a drop of this down in the bottom first. Just like so. And then hopefully that will kind of ooze out when I push the light in. So you can just push that down in there. No, it's not oozing. So I'll just mix them up and put around there just to take up the gap. And there we go. You can see there we've got the, the puddle of glue in there. So hopefully that will dry back and that will look lovely. Basically that is the Ammo Ultra Glue. and I've mixed it literally so it's almost like water. Very, very thin. So uh, yeah, hopefully that will dry back and it will look half decent. We shall see. But... Um, it doesn't I'll just put some more on there but, uh, it kind of looks kind of flat ish you can see the light moving around in there I hope you can see the light. It's, it's like a prick in the top hat as I said like chucking a sausage up Park Street like we used to say in Bristol we go hopefully that'll look all right when it's dry and uh, it's underneath anyway, isn't it? So at the end of the day, I mean, I know I, I wouldn't normally say that, but uh, when you've got a part that fits that bad, there's not really much else we could do. We could have got a bit of acrylic rod, I suppose, and polished it and put it in there. But um, this is out of the box, remember? So got to go with it. So we'll let that dry now for probably 24 hours because it's so deep. It's actually shrinking back. I can see it shrinking back already. I don't want the glue to run over onto that rim. I want it to stay within the 
within the lens area. So we'll let that dry, or have it level, and uh, see how it looks when it's dried out. It's uh, Tuesday today, Tuesday the 24th of January 2023, and I've been to the dentist, and now I'm going to go live on Ice Queen 7's channel, so uh, I'll see you all after that. And we're back. Okay, so unfortunately this um, ill-fitting light has held things up, so whereas I wanted this to be filming this like half an hour after the previous segment, it's like... 28 hours after the previous segment so that's all dry now and I've got a mask on it I'm not sure if it's supposed to be amber or not I'm guessing they would have changed it for different times and and you know it, it was an identification light after all now this um lower engine cover um I've had a nightmare doing this and I've put about 97 million applications in Mr Surfacer but in the end I think we're there and we've got that seam dealt with um one of the big issues with this kit and I don't think they're going to be able to sort it because it's going to be thousands and thousands of pounds worth of tool modifications. But one of the big issues we're having, and as you know, I've had it with the ailerons. I've had it with the engine bearers, the not the engine bearers, but these these frames in here. Um, you've got one side being thicker than the other. And I also had it with this and I had a step on both sides and it was really difficult to get rid of. And as you can see, I've had a you know step there. And I should have enlarged the step on the inside and got the outside better, but never mind. But you can see here when you look, the problem is, if you look, look at the thickness of that there compared to the thickness of that there. And what you can see is that <clears throat> one side is massively thicker than the other. We'll just give it a measure a minute. Because um, I'm saying massively thicker. So that is 1.5. And that is 1.3, so it's 0.2, um, so it's a good sort of 15% whatever thicker than that side. So, and, and then what happens is you come to fit this into your aircraft, and you can see that I can get this side to go down lovely and flush, but this side I can't. So we need to now remove plastic from this side as well, and it's a bit annoying. You know, it's a beautiful kit, but it's a bit annoying that... You know, here we are, it's 2023 and we're, we're having stuff like this. It's a bit, you know, so I've got to now reprofile all this because you can see how thin this comes down here and how thick that is there. So it looks like it might be sort of similar up here, but it's back there that's the problem. So I'm going to have to reprofile all that and get that to go in so it sits nice and flush, but it's just annoying. OK, so there we go. As you can see now, it fits a whole lot nicer because I've thinned it all out on the back. So um, much better there. <laughs> we shouldn't have to be doing this, should we? Anyway, um, it's all simple stuff. It's better than it being too thin, isn't it, I suppose. Just want to talk about while I've got these engine covers off. Um, I've had an email from one of my followers, Alex, um, who very kindly took the trouble to get in touch with the IPMS regarding this out-of-the-box thing. Um, I don't want to get into a massive debate about it, so please don't start to argue, disagree, agree, whatever, in the comments. But um, Alex has actually sent some questions to IPMS, and they have responded uh, to his questions, <clears throat> and he's emailed them to. I'm not going to put a copy of it up, because that's that's his information. It's nothing to do with the rest of us. Um, but basically, he has asked the question... Is it okay to use plastic card as a shim or whatever to improve the fit of non-fitting parts? And basically the answer is, as long as the original kit parts are used, shim used to, you know, improve the fit of those parts that is not visible is absolutely fine. So that's good. So obviously using plastic card in gaps, um, shimming up the tail like I did back here is fine. He also asked the question, would using stretch brew, plastic rod, brass rod, whatever... Um, be okay to improve the strength of poorly designed, poorly fitted items like I did with the brass rod on the tailplanes and on the rudder. 
And the answer to that is fine. Yes, as long as it's non-visible and, you know, it is only to improve the strength or whatever, then it's absolutely fine. That's, that's, I'm reading between the lines here. He also then went on to ask that that's the question about engine covers um, to would it be OK to use stretch, sprue, pin, whatever to attach engine covers to the model? And the answer is basically as long as they are original removable panels that came with the original kit and they're exposing original plastic parts that came with the original kit, then it's fine. But you mustn't use pins or whatever, but it's OK to use magnets. So I thought that very, very strange because one of the things about out of the box is not using aftermarket. So I would have thought that me actually using stretch sprue from the kit to make pins to locate the parts would have been OK. But apparently it's not what they want me because they would actually be visible. But hidden invisible magnets would be absolutely fine. So very, very strange. I'm not going to change it now, I don't think, because I'm never going to enter this in a competition anyway. I was just trying to keep the whole thing sort of in the theme of being out of the box so that when we see the built model no one can say oh yeah but you've built that kit and you've added seat belts and you've added this and you've added that i'm basically showing you how i'm building this model what can be achieved out of the box with no extras whatsoever other than a few bits of brass rod and the only reason i've used the brass rod is for poor design it's not because the kit is poorly detailed or whatever but they haven't actually thought of how we're going to fix the rudder and how we're going to fix the tailplanes. So that's why I've used the brass rod there. Um, so there we go. I mean, you could use plastic rod, stretch sprue, whatever, but apparently it's fine to use the brass rod if you are going for the competition route. But that lower panel there, I fitted that on and because I've thinned the back out, it appears it's going to stay on there. It's, um, it's not falling away. So that's good. Um, as I say, I have the option to put magnets in there, should I wish. I may do. We will see after I've, after I've finished. But uh, I'm not going to waste time doing it. I want to get it done, finished, get something else on the bench. Anyway, so there we go. So that's now thin now. I've dealt with that seam. So I think basically now we can go back to square one and start again. I need to get some primer on this um, because I want to obviously paint that at the same time as I paint the bottom of the aircraft. Um, so obviously we're going to have pre-shading and stuff on here. So I'm going to get some primer on there and then I'll come back when that's dry and we'll start on our pre-shading, I think. OK, then, guys, you're not going to believe this. I am absolutely and utterly livid. I have just been in touch with Peter of um, Artscale Kit. He's the guy that makes all the wonderful um, masks. If you've seen the Hurricane build I'm doing, I don't know when this video is going out in relation to that, but... They are absolutely brilliant. Um, I've got the Hurricane. I've got the 132nd scale Revell Hurricane. It's this company here, ASK. They make the mask and they're actually making masks for this using my parts. So there's the, there's the Hurricane canopy and I've used the internal and the external mask. You can see it's copper green inside. And then we've got the lovely matte green on the outside. Really, really nice. Really pleased with how that's come out. They're beautiful masks, they're really thin, they're very, very sticky and uh, very, very sharp edges on them as well. No sort of fluffy edges. Really, really nice. So, um, as some of you will know, I've sent the clear parts from this kit off to him to make masks for the Airfix 124 scale Spitfire. And I sent those parts on the 6th of January. It is now the 25th of January, 2022, and he still doesn't have them. I've just tracked them and they are actually sat in customs waiting for him to prove their value. What? So I've contacted him and he said, yep, yeah, they've been in touch with him. And uh, he's he's actually said they are, you know, they're practically worthless. They're clear parts for a model kit and they will be used and sent straight back. OK, sir, pay us 30 euros and we'll deliver them. What the hell is going on with this bloody world? Honestly, 30 euros to release Tuppence Aitney's worth of plastic parts to deliver to him. I mean, for Christ's sake, come on, world. I want, I want to get off. It's just crap. Absolute and utter bollocks. What is going on? Right, that's my rant over. Let's get this pre-shading done. Right, so we're going to um, pre-shade the underneath. I'm not going to do it all on camera, but I'll just do a little bit. Because I know some of you like to see it, and a lot of you say I don't do enough um, spraying on camera. 
So pre-shading is not strictly correct. Um, you don't tend to see aircraft with panels all pre-shaded and everything or with the edges darkened. You do see it sometimes on modern jets where they go around and repair the scratched paint and stuff. Um, you'll see some Tomcats and uh, some Tornadoes in a hell of a state. So um, it can be quite effective on them. I think on World War II aircraft, we use it for an effect. Like you can see here now, you can see areas where I've sprayed black showing through the paint and it kind of gives it some depth. It's rather than just having this gray platform. So what I'm gonna do is pre-shade it and that's basically picking up the panel lines, inspection panels, gun ports, edges of the ailerons, everywhere where there's a feature I'm going to pick up with some black paint. Well, it's actually, um, I'm using LP65, which is rubber black. Okay, so it's the same as XF85. Uh, but I'm using the LP because it's a much smoother paint. It's less grainy than the XF paints. X Tamiya paints tend to be very grainy. So, um, in my opinion. So I'm using the LP65. I'm going to make sure the masks are all pushed down. Well, it doesn't matter if we get a bit of overspray on the leading edges because, as we said before, the they, they probably work perfectly straight on the leading edges anyway. So what we're going to do is grab a piece of tissue and just check. Just check we're going to get a flow okay. I'm down to about 12 PSI, keeping the pressure low. This airbrush is actually knackered. The nozzle is knackered on this airbrush. I'm waiting for a new one to be delivered. But it's great for doing this because it, if it means it's a bit spattery or something, it doesn't matter because it's all getting covered up. But... um. Basically, all I'm going to do is pick up, we've got a panel line there, a panel line there, and we've got some inspection ports there. So, all I'm going to do is pick up on this wing tip, okay, and just come in with a dark line. Now, what we don't want is a jet black, sort of sharp line. I've, I've seen somebody do this with a magic marker and it didn't work. Um, you want a sort of, like this, to be faded in and faded out. You want a soft edge to it. So that when we, basically what we're going to do is when we actually come to spray the grey, when we put a wash on, the wash will go in there and you'll have like a gradient leading down into the, 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 the dark wash. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go around these, around these gun port, these um, access ports here. So, you know, so keeping the air on so I don't get any spatter. We'll try and make sure the paint gets down into the groove. Okay, down into the recessed line. Otherwise, you end up with a dark area around a light line. And when you put the wash in, you might get a dark bottom to the line. And then a sort of light up the sides and then dark again. So that's just in my experience. So we're also, we've masked off this because basically what we're showing here is wear, tear, gre grease and grime in the edges of panels. That's, you know, where it's picked up dirt and stuff or it's oozed out or whatever. You know, it's whatever you want to think it is. But obviously where this white is, because it's been freshly painted on, because we remember, we're depicting this now around about July 44, because we're only having the lower half on. So these stripes would have been painted around about June, okay, beginning of June, and now we're only a month later, they've had to take the top ones off. So these have only been on a month, so they won't be particularly grimy or anything yet. So we're just going to go along here, go all the way along here. If you notice, I've got the panels in for the guns. So we can get those shaded as well. And what I'll do in a minute, I'll take them out, go along the edge of the aileron. Okay, and I'm running over the tape, but I'm not going to run along the edge of the tape. Okay, I'm going to run down the edge here because we've got this, this gun hatch there. Okay, and if you notice, it's not straight, it's not perfect. I don't want it to be straight and perfect. I've seen models done where it's straight and perfect and it looks bloody awful. And you also don't want to go over doing it. Um, I'm not going to pick on anything in particular. I'm not going to show any models that are overdone because that's not fair to the modeler. But we've all seen it where you end up with models that look like a bloody chessboard. And that's not what I'm after. That's why I'm doing these edges quite soft. And then when we actually spray it, they will barely show through. Now on this aileron we've got a line going here okay so i'm going to use my left hand to steady me because i want this to be fairly good along there let's come back down and then we can come into these panels here. i'm going close i'm just gonna just 
Pick up all those dots there. Just like that. That's what we need to do, that's it. And you can see there, if you look close up, you can see we've picked up on all the panel lines. Oh, there's another one there I've missed, look. Come along there and just pick up that one. So the airbrush is ready to spat. You get dry, tip, tip dry when you're doing this tiny work. So there we go. This is because I've actually got rapid thinners in here rather than the normal. Um, this, what I've basically done here, and there's a little tip for you if you are wanting to save a bit of money. I previously had grey Mr. Surfacer in here. I cleaned the airbrush through and to give it a final clean, I put a drop of um, the rapid thinners in there. This one here, okay, which is great for cleaning your airbrush through. And rather than blow it through, I left it in there to use as thinner for this paint. So this will be slightly darker because it'll have a tiny bit of Mr. Surfacer in it. But it's 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 just economy, you know. It's um, why why waste the thinners if you can get away with it? Uh, a lot of people, including Paul, say you can use cellulose thinners. I use cellulose thinners for flushing the gun the gun through the airbrush through, but I never use it as a final clean. And I find it tends to not do it properly. That's just me. I know Paul will disagree with me. So what I can do now is remove these patches. Okay. As we've got the edges of the hatches, what we don't want to do, as you can see there, if I put the airbrush down, you can see there where the where the hatch has masked the edge, and that'll look terrible under the paint. So you can see it there as well. So what we're going to do is just go around this now. Just go around without the hatches in place, and that'll make sure we get the edge shadowed. There we go. Just like that. Easy, isn't it? So I'm going to do the rest with the extractor on and I'll see you when it's all done. And there we go guys, that's the pre-shading all done. So uh, looking all good and dandy. So ready now, I'll let that dry for a couple of hours and then we'll go over with a um, with a coat of the underneath grey which I think is XF83 is it? I think it's XF83, I'll have to have a look. Um, I've got it written down on here haven't I? I've got it written down on the... In here is it in the colour call outs? XF fifty four. Yeah, I don't. I don't agree with all of this on here. The conversions. There's, um, I think those conversion charts were done before the later paints were available. Yeah, XF eighty three is the colour for underneath, which is one six five medium sea grey. So we'll do that. We've also got to get those yellow wing tips done. I'm not sure whether to do them before or after. Um, I may actually do them after the grey, but before doing the upper surfaces, because it'll be easy to cover the grey with the yellow, but it won't be easy to cover the green. So, um, and as you can see, most of the yellow is on the green. So, there we go. So, um, there we are. I'm going to get some uh, grey paint on the bottom, and then we'll see how she looks. Okay, so our pre-shading is all dry now. I've got my XF83. This is medium sea grey 2 RAF in the airbrush. It's thinned about 50-50 with Mr. Colour Leveling Thinners. You must thin it to your own taste. Uh, I may want to thin this a bit more, we shall see. I'll just do a little test on there. It's coming out lovely. So we'll just test on this masking tape as well. That's fine. I am going to turn the air pressure up slightly because I've still got it turned down. So now we're up on about 17-18 PSI. And literally I'm going to paint this section of the wing and then I'm going to go and finish it in the booth. But basically I've, I've got some, um, I did have some masking solution on there. Is it still there? No, it appears to have gone. So I'm going to have to mask that light again. <laughs> right, I've stuck a bit of masking tape on it just to cover it. I've got um, liquid mask on it, but trouble is you've got to put it on and wait for it to dry. And I want to get this video out there for you guys. So um, basically what we're going to do is just lightly paint over this end of the wing, keeping the keeping the flow in the pattern in the way of air direction or whatever you want to call it. And as you can see it's hardly a lot different than the colour of the of the actual Mr. Service serum. Boy oh boy it stinks. Okay, you can see we've got those gun doors back. And as you can see there, that's a very light coat and you can see the the um, appreciating coming through very very dark indeed 
So what we'll do now is we'll turn it round and go in from the other way so we make sure we get the paint into all the nooks and crannies. And it wants to fall off the bench. So I keep my hand under this side to stop it falling. I'm just I'm not worried about those doors lifting, we've got masking tape underneath. There you go, you can see slowly but surely the uh, the pre-shading is disappearing. The camera tends to enhance it. It looks a lot darker on the camera than it is to the naked eye. I'm just going to give that another coat. A little bit heavier this time just to try and get some coverage on there. I don't want to do too much painting because it absolutely bloody stinks and it's not good for you at all. Okay, so there you get the idea. Get the idea. So I'm going to go and finish this off in the booth and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like because obviously my health is more important than showing you <laughs> what I'm doing with an airbrush. Right, I'll see you in a minute. And there we go. So as you can see for the newer ones amongst you, this the this is quite subtle. Okay, the camera is actually making it look a lot darker than it really is. I don't know if it's because of the light or what, but uh, to the naked eye it's nothing like as dark as you're seeing it. But it's it kind of just... It just breaks it up. It gives it that sort of non-monotone look. It's really uh, an effective way of making your model look a bit sort of more interesting to look at. So I know everybody likes to see an unmasking. So let's see how these invasion stripes look. Because now that the bottom's painted, any weathering or anything we do it will incorporate those invasion stripes. So we can grab that corner there. Pull that back and then when we spray the top we may just cover the edge. I've got to go around here with a brush and get these cannons in properly. As we can see here we have nice even invasion stripes. Be careful not to scratch the paint and try and do this while the paint's still soft if you can because that way when you when you peel it up like the edge of the grey paint here if you leave the paint to dry you can sometimes get peeling you can actually lift the paint because the the paint has stuck better to the edge of the masking tape than it has to your model so it's better to do it while the paint's still soft and then if you can pull the tape like that towards the paint and it will kind of snap it off if you like so there we go, we can see that one there. I'm going to leave the back one because I've got to do that um, that sky coloured band again because I put uh, pre-shading over it. The belly's just fallen off. I wish my belly would fall off. It takes forever to get rid of my belly. So there we go. That can undo from there. Then we can grab that tape from there. And hopefully that will bring the front edge with it. Yes, it has. Will that bring the other little bits and pieces? Yes, it will. It's pretty cool. Jess is about to bark because there's kids on the way home outside. She loves kids, but she always barks at them. She barks at them when she can't see them. And she plays with them when she can. So uh, I don't think she sort of links the noises outside the house to the people she sees. So there we go. Let me grab that belly pan before I stand on it. In fact, no, what I'll do is we'll call that a day. So there you go. You can see we've got our invasion stripes now. We've got our everything looking good. I'll leave the foam in the radiators because we're going to be putting a mat coat on and everything. And I'll leave that mask on there to cover up that light because of the mat coat and everything going on. But uh, all in all, Happy with that and happy how it looks. So uh, you can see how you can make your 24 scale Spitfire look. And I must say the fit of the parts around here is bloody awesome. I can see a slight trace there of a line, which is really annoying because it didn't show up under the primer, but it's showing up under this paint. But that can stay. I mean, that is literally, as you can see, there's a tiny little mark just in front of my finger. That can stay. I'll just put a chip there or something. But there we are. Really, really pleased with that really happy and I'm going to remove this masking tape from here because I don't know how resilient that um sorry that isn't glued in it hasn't just broken 
you don't need to glue this in and then you can adjust the shape of it the height of it to get a good match on your um on your intake so there we are i'll see you all soon for parts what's this been 17 16 this is 16 isn't it so or 15 i can't remember now whatever part it is the next one will be the next number along numerically so i'll see you all for that one and uh, as i say uh, today is the 25th of january 2023 and at the moment the masks for the clear parts are still sat in check customs waiting to be collected so god only knows what's going on there so it's been a lot longer than i thought kind of wish i hadn't sent them but in another way i'm glad i did because that means now that um we're going to get masks for this kit from the brilliant art scale kit so uh I'm going to go on now. Oh, don't forget to do your undercarriage doors as well with the pre-shading and everything because you don't want them to look out of place. And also I've done the pito tube. Here's the pito tube. I haven't bothered painting the straight rod that comes out. I'm probably going to replace that with a piece of plastic rod. Because where is it? It's here. So there it is. I don't really want to use that. It's horrible. It's got mold seams on it. So we'll probably just use a piece of plastic rod. Although saying that, we're going to go out of the box, aren't we? So I will use that. So I'll have to brush paint that. When I brush paint those bits in there, but um, anyway, yeah, hang on, guys, here we go. So I've done the um the sky bit, the, the sky band around the back, and then we'll mask that up when we're ready to paint the top after we've done the canopy and everything. But you can see I've done that, so you can just see some shading coming through. That's the sort of effect what we just want it to come through, so it doesn't look like it's stuck on. And then you can see now with the the fresh stripes on the bottom, come around the bottom. You can see around there and around to the other side. We've got that uh, that band there. That's got to be masked off 19 millimeters parallel with the back edge of the striping, and then we'll put the camouflage on top. So there's another quick look as it's starting to dry out. You can see it's all looking hunky dory, and the detail. I mean, you can see the the, the beautiful detail that Airfix have put into this is really starting to pop now. You can see it there. So um, yeah, really really happy with that. That looks like a model now rather than a toy. So, uh, and that's always the problem. The bigger you go, your scales, it's always difficult to get away from that toy look. And no, some people will hit me or strike at me for saying toy, but uh, it's, a, it's a fact. A 70 second scale model, you can paint it out of the factory, not weathered at all. It looks like a model aircraft. You get some of this size, you paint it, just completely, you know, block colours, no, no weathering, no breaking up or anything. And it will look a little bit toyish, I can tell you. So, in my opinion, anyway. So there we go. So um, that came out well as well, all that seam work on there. It's a bit of a shame about all this panel thickness being different side to side. It's a bit of a pain in the ass. But I'm not sure if the gun panels are like it, are they? No, they're all good. So that's one good thing. So um, obviously once we've got everything all weathered and masked and, uh, and matte coated and everything, then we can start taking our masking tape and foam mat and everything and start giving it washes and stuff. So I'll see you soon for that. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.